Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is a first video of mine that you're watching. So it has been a little while since I have filmed. I filmed back, um, I think around like March or April and I felt like I was going to be able to start getting back into YouTube, like things were slowing down and then the end of the year craziness hit and I just kind of got caught up in that. For those that don't know, this was my very first year to teach and so I had no idea exactly how hectic the end of the year was. When I was student teaching, I student taught um, in the fall semester, so from August to December, and I never experienced that end of the year craziness, so this was all new to me, and there is so much that you have to do as a teacher at the end of the year. I had no idea, so it's just been a very crazy last month in my life. I am officially on summer break now, though, which is really nice. I've been on summer break for about a week. Our last day of school was May 25th, um, which is really nice. I know that a lot of the teachers I watch on YouTube have to go into, like, mid-June, so I will pray for you. I've only been on summer break for a week, and it has already just felt so nice. Um, I love my job and already like I miss my students so much um, but it has been really nice to kind of take that break from everything that comes with being a teacher. So I've been sleeping till like 8 a.m. which is really nice um, because usually I get up like at like 5 30 or 6 in the morning to get to school so sleeping till 8 has felt like heaven. Um, but anyway I've been like spending a lot of time with my nephews. I've been watching my nephews. I'm gonna watch my nephews this summer and just kind of focusing on things in my personal life that I kind of put on the back burner during the school year. Um, I've been like decluttering, cleaning things. I cleaned out my closets and I cleaned my bathroom and um, just things like that. And then I've already, because I just, I can't stop. Um, and if you're a teacher, you know that your teacher brain never truly turns off. I've already started um, making a few things for next school year, like the first week back. Um, I've been able to do things, like one of my favorite things about teaching is the creative side and like making different products and things like that. And I felt like I, I didn't really get to do that that last month of school just because things were so crazy. Um, so I've been just like making some activities for that first week back already, even though I've only been on summer a week. But like I said, your teacher brain never turns off. You are constantly thinking about um, your students in your classroom. So even though I kind of took a break, I kind of got right back into it just because I already m missed teaching. So um, yeah, but anyway, I wanted to film this video just to kind of share about the ending of my school year, mainly April, um, because May was just a whirlwind of different school activities. Like we had like a, a fun day and a talent show day and it was just, it was a lot. Um, but April, you know, was full on teaching. So I wanted to share some of the activities because honestly, April was probably one of my favorite months just because of some of the activities that my class did in April so I figured I would share those with you and I know some of you are already on summer but maybe you can use these things next year if you like them so I'll back up because last time that I posted a video um, it was right before my class started state testing and I kind of talked about that when I filmed that video so the first two weeks of April my class was um, state testing which I was extremely extremely nervous about I had never done state testing before um, I, I student taught second grade so it just wasn't a thing and even if I would have student taught an upper grade like I said I student taught in the fall so I probably wouldn't have seen you know state testing anyway so I had to administer all of the tests so the way that my school did it since we're departmentalized I teach fifth grade ELA English language arts for those that maybe are just watching me um, I'm on a three-man team so I have three classes of um, regular ELA and then I teach two blocks of like a rem remediation ELA class um, but those are much smaller so I have three like main classes of about 25 to 26 students each that rotate um, to my class and then I have two other team teachers one that teaches math and then the other teaches science and social studies um, and then I teach ELA so we just tested our homeroom which means all morning um, our homeroom was in our class and they were taking their state tests. In fifth grade in Oklahoma, which is where I teach, they take a writing test, a reading test, a science test, and a math test. Actually, I think last year um, they had to take social studies also, but they didn't have to take that. Um, they kind of nixed that one. But that was four tests and we had six testing days all together. They get one day for writing, two days for reading, one day for math, and two days for 
their science test. So they had six testing days all together. Um, so the first two weeks in April we were testing. We tested on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday one week, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday the next week. Um, we don't like to test on Monday and Friday just because there's a lot of people absent on Mondays and Fridays and it just works better to do it in the middle of the week. Like I said, I was really nervous about administering a test just because they put a lot of pressure on teachers um, when it comes to testing or at, le at least I felt pressure um, just because they make it a point to make sure that you are very aware of what you're supposed to be doing just because there's so many things um, that could possibly invalidate the test and I was just really nervous so you have a TAM a testing administrator manual and I looked over that sucker like all day every day like every time I had a spare minute in my classroom I was looking at it just trying to make sure that I understood what I was doing just because I didn't want to mess up and like I said I would never administered a state test before so I was just really nervous I know it might it kind of sounds silly but I don't know for some reason I was just really nervous and I think it was you know being a first year teacher never having him done it before um, but it all went it all went fine and it was kind of nice because although the mornings were really stressful um, the afternoons I kept it very laid back um, we would just kind of play games and um, they would have extra recess some days and then we watched them um, there's a TV show on Amazon if you have Amazon Prime uh, called Android so we would watch that some of the days and my students really love that TV show um, so the mornings were really hectic just because you have to make sure that all the materials are out that they have their test and their answer document and their highlighter and their pencil and their eraser and like their mint that they are supposed to get and they have like a snack also that you're supposed to give them and then you have to take a class restroom break which I was so not used to um, that's like a typical thing if you teach like elementary or primary but in fifth grade we don't do class restroom breaks you just go to the restroom on your own um, so we had to like do that and it was just very different and but like I said um, even though the mornings were hectic with all that and then um, picking up all the tests and I have to document like what time each student finished the test and make sure everything is in the correct order and put everything back in the box and send it with my test proctor. Um, it, it was very hectic in the morning but the afternoons were really nice and I just got to kind of bond with my students and take a break from um, like teaching them stuff just because in the middle of taking tests I wasn't going to you know put more information into their brain. Um, their brains were already like fried by the afternoon because they would test like for three hours in the morning and then go to lunch and then come back to my class. So anyway, um, it all went fine. I had really, really nice test proctors, um, which made it, you know, really nice. I had one um, that the first day she was in my class, I got kind of nervous because she had asked me for a pencil. And so I thought, oh, is she like going to write down that like I did something wrong or something was wrong with my room? Because um, that's another thing, like you have to have everything covered in your room. I couldn't have anything with a number or letter. I know some schools, districts, it's um, like anything academic, I could not have anything with a number or letter. So pretty much everything in my room, other than a clock, I could have a clock, that was it. So I had one test proctor, I think on like the first or second day, she had asked for a pencil and I was like, okay, here you go. And then she had brought me a thank you card. I think I have a, hold on. Yeah, I actually had it right back there. Um, this is what she was writing and it says, um, you can tell you are an awesome teacher by the way your students react to you and that they love and respect you. Thank you for doing what you do great. We need a lot more teachers like you, keep it up. Um, so this was someone who was, I never met before, was just in my classroom to you know be a test proctor and I don't know that just made me feel really good and that was really awesome that she did that um, but anyway testing went fine and that was the first two weeks in April and then it was over so for the rest of April my class was focusing I thought I wasn't filming for a minute and I was about to be real upset um, my class was focusing on poetry I know I'm talking super fast I feel like I'm talking really fast but I haven't filmed in a while and I'm excited and I'm also in kind of a time frame I'm going to a dance recital um, and like 40 minutes so I'm trying to get this done anyway um, for the last half of April and into May my class was focusing on poetry um, April is National Poetry Month, so I know a lot of, you know, teachers do something with poetry in the month of April. I figured I would share some of the activities that my class did for poetry. I was really excited to teach poetry. Um, a lot of my students were not excited, especially the boys. Um, they just 
they just didn't really like poetry. I think in the end they didn't like it because a lot of them told me that they liked it. Uh, but going into it, their mindset was, oh, this is going to be awful. I don't know what happened in elementary school with poetry, but when I said we were doing poetry, they were like, oh, so we, my phone's ringing. I don't want to go check it, so I'm just going to wait till it stops ringing and I'll call whoever it is back in a minute. Anyway, really loved the month of April. I mean, state testing, I didn't love. Um, I could have taught so much during that time that we focused on taking tests that don't even matter. Anyway, that's a different rant for a different day. But I did like the month of April. It was a very long month. We had no extra days off. The kids were completely wiped out from testing. Um, but I really liked the month of April. I felt like we did a lot of really good things in the month of April. Um, first off, during testing, during the afternoon, um, they needed something to do, <laughs> so we actually did the um, famous, if you've been on Instagram and you're a teacher, you probably saw it. It was the patterned bunnies, um, and I don't have an example to show you just because I let the kids take them home. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, um, it's Daisy Therese along with my Snapchat. That's where I post most of my teaching stuff, um, Snapchat and Instagram, and then my Twitter also. Um, all three of those are Daisy Therese, so... I posted a picture of my class's patterned bunnies out in the hallway, um, so I'll insert a picture right here. Um, but they did those and it turned out really cute, um, and they did, they put them on like neon paper, and then they had like glasses and bow ties that were also neon, um, and it looked super cool. So I think I'll do that again next year, just because it's a nice activity to do during testing. Um, it's something that requires them to be pretty focused. Uh, which is nice because it requires them to focus, but it's not something that's going to be like super hard for them to do. So it was a really good like afternoon, you know, after state testing kind of activity, if you know what I mean. After that, like I said, we moved on to poetry. So we learned all about the different poetic devices. We talked about rhyme and stanza and different figurative language, which is something else that we focused on. Um, and then we did a few poetry activities, so I figured I'd show you those. One of my favorite activities that we did in April um, was paint chip poetry. Um, so they looked like this, and all you do is just go to Lowe's or Walmart and get a bunch of these paint chips. Um, they probably shouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't think they would say anything. They're free, like you can take them. Um, I needed like... 80 of them <laughs> because I have like 78, 79 students. Um, I can't remember exactly how many I had at that point. My class numbers changed all the time because I constantly had kids moving in and out. Uh, but um, you give them one of these and I kind of gave them some guidelines of what I wanted them to write on their paint chip. So these are color poems about um, a color and I gave them what I wanted in each line just because this was the first poetry activity that we did and so I kind of wanted to ease them into it. Um, so we did poems based off the color and the first line they had to personify their color so they had to give their color an emotion um, and it worked really nicely because we were learning about different types of figurative language during this time so personification and similes and metaphors um, which worked so well into this. So um, they had to give green and emotion so this is green is energized and then the next line was um, their color tastes like so this was green tastes like um, fresh water with lime um, so this was hers and then they did what their color sounds like so it says green sounds like kids playing in the summer and then the next one was smell so they just went through their um, five senses green smells like freshly cut grass and then they had to do what it feels like. So green feels like um, grass between my toes on a warm summer day. Um, so I thought that this was really, really fun. Um, so this one, blue is the mo or blue is depressed, which is a little sad. Here is another example. This one was purple, and it says purple is weird and bubbly. Purple is a taste of grapes. Purple is a sound of a soda fizz soda fizz in a can. Purple is a smell of lavender and purple feels like a loyal friend. Um, so they did a really really good job and I kept a few of them. So that was one activity um, that if you're doing poetry, I know 
you know, you might not be able to do it this year, but if you're needing an activity for next year, paint trip poetry um, is really fun and the students really liked it. I let them, you know, pick whatever color. I had like a huge variety of colors, um, so they got to pick which one they wanted. But this was really fun and I really liked it and so did they. Another activity that they really liked, um, like I said, we were focusing on figurative language. So um, one of the figurative language devices that we were focusing on at this time was alliteration, which is like the repeated sound at the beginning of a word um so we did this activity and when i found this i didn't know if they were going to like it or not i didn't know if it was too elementary i do teach fifth grade so that it's kind of like that in between age of like elementary and middle school i teach it in intermediate school so it's fifth and sixth only um so sometimes they aren't really into activities if they seem too elementary they absolutely loved this and I actually gave it to another ELA teacher and she was like, my kids loved it too. Um, but what they did was um, there is a poem called, I think like Ebenezer's um, Ice Cream Store and it has a bunch of alliteration in it. Every line pretty much has alliteration and it goes through a bunch of ice cream flavors. And if you look it up, um, there's actually like a wrap version of it on YouTube, um, which I didn't find until after we had done this. So... I didn't play that, but next year if I do this, I definitely would. We just read the poem, but it's a really funny poem, and it goes through, like, all these wacky flavors of ice cream. So what we did is I gave my students um, this sheet that had ice cream cones on it, and they had to make up their own ice cream flavors, but each flavor had to contain alliteration. So it was a really good way for them to practice. And um, later that month, they actually had to take like an end of the year test on figurative language. And my students did really well. And I think a lot of it was we had these activities. So when they were trying to remember like what was alliteration, all they had to do was, oh, think back to my ice cream cones. And it helped to remind them, oh, alliteration is that repeated sound. So um, this was one of my students and she did such a good job. I actually kept her I just threw it on the ground, so that's great. What it looked like, and they had to design their flavor and then color their ice cream to match. And the girls really liked this because a lot of my girls just liked coloring and stuff like that. The boys really liked it because they were having competitions of who could come up with the grossest sounding flavors, which is fine with me as long as it contains alliteration. I don't care how gross it is. So this one, um, the first one was crab caramel cotton cream and if you look at this she did such a good job it's like a beach and those are like crab legs sticking out I, th I don't know it just i thought she did such a good job um syrup salami staple sundae um it actually has like staples in it um jumbo jelly java lovely lime lemon and then drippy double dark delight but anyway this is an example and we you know read the poem together and then they did this and they really liked it and it was super fun that was that activity that I thought they were would think was too elementary for them um but it totally wasn't like they just loved it another poetry thing that we did uh, which we did a lot more but this is the last like poetry thing I'm going to show you um was shape poetry and out of all the types of poetry because we did several my students loved shape poetry the most and I think it's because I let them do whatever shape they wanted so they just got to be very creative um so I told them that they could either like write the poem like um, on the outside, like this example, um, or they could write it in the inside, like this example. So these were two of my students. Um, so this boy did a guitar, and he wrote a poem about a guitar, like on the outside, and drew the guitar, and I just thought, like, he did a really good job. And then this one um, is super, super sweet. We actually had a poetry um, symposium where students could read some of their poetry, and I actually asked the student that wrote this if she would read it because it was super super sweet um she did the bible and her poem that she wrote inside was just it was so so like just heartwarming um even some of the people in the audience were like almost in tears when she read it and i was too so um they did shape poetry and that was something that was really fun for them so um we did a lot of other poetry type things we did blackout poetry which was super fun um but those are just a couple of the activities um that really stood out to me and that I will probably do next year just because I love them, my students love them, and um, I don't know, I'll probably continue to do them. Another thing that we did, um, which I'm going to film an entire video on this, so I'm not going to go into detail, but we did something called a silent desk talk, um, which was probably my very favorite activity that we did all year. And I'm actually going to film an entire video on what a silent desk talk is and like the pros and cons and what I think about them and all of that. So I'll wait um, until that video. Um, you, might already, you might already know what it is, but um, 
it was like one of the best activities I did all year. Um, I got like really good feedback from my students because I asked them and that's the thing about being a first year teacher. A lot of times this year if I did something I'd be like, hey, what did you guys think about this? Like, did you like it? Did you not? Um, and I really appreciate and value their feedback. Um, so they loved it and I'll share more about what a silent desk talk is probably in my next video. So something else that we did kind of during this time um, was we read our last novel of the year and we read Number the Stars which is, I feel it's just like a cla classic fifth grade book. Um, I read Number of the Stars when I was in fifth grade, so it's just something that a lot of students have to read in fifth grade. Um, but they actually really liked it, and they liked it because it was a book that made them feel more mature, because it's more of a mature book. Um, I mean, it's not like inappropriate or anything, but um, it requires them to be a little bit more mature, and even before we started it, we had this whole like very open class discussion about um, you know, handling it with maturity and any time you read, you know, a historical fiction, you have to be very respectful because you never know, like, the person sitting next to you, what connection they might have to that event in history, like a family member. Um, you just never know. So we really talked about handling it with maturity and even though it was a very mature topic, um, just handling it with respect. Um, and they did an awesome job. And before we even started Number of the Stars, we spent a good week just on the background and the historical context of the novel which is something I learned because earlier in the year we read The Keeping Room which is also a historical fiction um, and it's set during the American Revolution and I gave them very little background on the American Revolution and I just feel like that novel would have been more meaningful to them if they would have known more of the history and they hadn't learned about the American Revolution yet in social studies so a lot of them just didn't really understand some of the events in the book. So I learned the hard way and this time I made sure to give them a very good background of, you know, the Holocaust, World War One, World War Two. Um, and I think it, it just made the book a lot more meaningful to them because I did have that connection with, you know, the historical context of the novel. So we read that and they handled it with such maturity and I was super proud of them. Um, they were very interested with their questions. I mean, they did ask questions, but um, they were respectful in the way that they asked them and I don't know it was just super meaningful and we did it along with poetry and I think because that book is a little bit more vulnerable um, it made them feel more vulnerable and so their poetry was a little more open and they expressed themselves a little more openly so I liked the two of them together if that makes sense. So we finished up poetry and number of the stars toward the end of school like the second to last week of school and then the very last week of school it was just like different events and activities. It was very crazy. Um, we had like um, poetry symposium one day in the last week of school and then they had a fun day um, where they had like the you know bounce houses and things um, that PTA put on and they you know sewed snow cones and things like that and then we had a talent show one day so um, in between that like when they were in my class we just worked on you know cleaning things up, packing things up, them taking their supplies home. Um, they did a poetry project outside of school um, so they presented those. They filled out a report card on me. I decided to give my kids a teacher report card um, where they could basically grade me on different aspects of teaching like on a scale of you know A to F and um, that was fun for them because all year you know I grade them and I told them you know all year I've been grading you now you get to grade me and they filled out the teacher report card which was you know fun for them but really valuable for me like I got really good feedback. Um, so that was pretty much it. And then it was the last day of school. Um, on the last day of school, um, I gave, I just had my homeroom all day, which I love, I love my homeroom. Um, out of all my classes, like, I hate saying they're my favorite, but I just vibed very well with my homeroom, and they were just a really funny class. Um, they were kind of more of a difficult class just because I had a lot of, um, like, very social students in there. Um, but they were super fun, and I miss them a lot. Um, but I had them all day, so I gave out like class awards, like those like superlative awards, like most likely to. Um, we did that, and then we played Minute to Win It games, which was really fun. Um, and then you know I sent them on their way. Um, there were a lot of tears. I had a lot of students crying because they didn't want to leave. I even had one tell me like, usually I'm so happy at the end of the year, but I'm so sad that I have to leave your class. Um, and I had a group of um, girls, I posted about this on Snapchat, they made like a reasons why we love 
Miss Huber me um, book and one of them one of the reasons was we're like a family and I was like you know that's so true like you spend so much time with your students that they really do end up being like your second family um, anyway that's basically what I wanted to share in this video I know it was a little all over the place but I just had a lot of things that I wanted to share um, so anyway if you have any requests or videos that you want to see a lot of people have um, asked for like first year teacher tips since I just finished my first year so I'll probably do something similar to that probably just a video talking about like what I've learned my first year of teaching and things like that um, I did film a classroom tour so that was my last video that I posted like a month or so ago so if you missed that um, make sure and check that out if you're interested in what my first year classroom looked like. I just want to take a minute to thank you guys so much for just kind of sticking with me. Um, for those that don't know I've been doing this off and on since I was um, just barely 18. I started my YouTube channel like a month after I turned 18 um, which just seems very young to me now even though back then it, I felt very old um, but now I am 24 so I've been doing this a while um, but I started my freshman year of college and one of the reasons I started um, was at that time like back in 2010 when I started there are very few youtubers that were in college um, there are very few YouTubers that were becoming teachers or teachers. It's a, a lot more popular now. It's kind of taken off and become more of a thing. Um, but back in 2010, just wasn't. It wasn't a thing. Um, so I really appreciate guys um, sticking with me um, through all that. A lot of you have been there since the beginning, like my freshman year of college, and I've been there through this journey um, that I've been on. So thank you so much for, you know, sticking with me through all of that. That is it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I know this, what, what am I up to? Like 30 minutes or so. Um, but thank you for sticking through this entire video. Um, like I said, if you have any requests or anything that you want to see, um, I will be watching my nephews this summer, but I still have more time than you know during the school year to film um so if you have video requests um leave them in the comments down below um other than that that is all and i will see you very soon in my next video bye guys